Okay, so I am so excited to bring you 3.3 notes, prove lines are parallel. This is kind of going in a different order than we did last time. Last time on 3.2 notes, they told us the lines were parallel, and therefore we were then able to set up equations to allow us to solve for x and find measurements of angles. Now, they're not necessarily telling us that the lines are parallel. They're asking us to prove to them that they are with an equation. So it's kind of like we're doing the same thing, and it's kind of like we're doing it in reverse. The first thing we're going to talk about is the corresponding angles converse. And I want to talk to you about that word converse first because it's kind of like a new word that we haven't discussed before and we will discuss in length um, in the future. But I wanted to go ahead and give you the definition of converse. And it is a statement... And let's write it out and then I'll explain it more in just a second. A statement that switches the original hypothesis and conclusion. So that's what a converse is. Basically, you're switching the order of things, and that's what I, like I just told you. Last time we said, okay, if the lines are parallel, then they're congruent. So we're going to switch those things and say, if they're congruent, then I can prove they're parallel. So this first part, anything that comes after the word if in a statement is referred to as the hypothesis. Anything that comes after the word then in a statement is referred to as the conclusion. So basically, last time that we were saying if the lines are parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. So today we're going to say that in reverse and say if two lines are cut by a transversal, so the corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So if you can prove that right here angle 2 is congruent to angle 6, then you can also say that line J is parallel to line K. Now, so let's look at that in an example. So oh, we need to say then the lines are parallel. In example one, we want to find the value of x that makes m parallel to n. So basically, like I said, it's a lot of the same thing, but actually you're doing it in, re in reverse, but you don't really notice the reverse. You're still doing the problems the same exact way. If m was parallel to n, then these two angles would be congruent to one another because they're corresponding angles. So in order to prove that they're parallel, well, all you're going to do is still set them equal to each other. You're not going to do it any different, but all you're saying is, you're basically saying, yes, I can prove it to you. I can prove that those angles are parallel, or sorry, those lines are parallel. So if we solve that equation, then x is 34. So basically what you're saying is that if x is 34 and only 34, then line M is parallel to N. So that is the only case that these lines are parallel. If X is anything else than 34, they are not parallel. So you try the next one on your own. Find the value of X that makes line A parallel to line B. So you try that one on your own, and then you'll kind of come back and check your work with mine.
Okay, to make sure that line A is parallel to line B, let's first identify, okay, here's this angle and there's the one that's 98 degrees. Well, you can see that right away those are corresponding angles because they're in the same position but a different location. So what we're going to need to do then, if we want to say that those lines are parallel to one another, then what we're going to have to do is say, okay, we're going to have to set these expressions equal to each other, or that expression equal to that measurement, and then solve. So add 7, add 7. So 5x is 105. If we divide by 5, then x is 21. So if and only if x is 21, then the uh, line, oops, A, then line A is parallel to line B. X cannot be anything else for those lines to be parallel. So here we can basically do the same thing, take the converse of the alternate interior angle theorem and the alternate exterior angle theorem. So basically, if two lines are cut by a transversal so that the alternate interior angles are congruent, so you see right here they're marked congruent, those are the arcs over the vertex. If they're congruent, then we can say that the lines are, then we can say that the lines are parallel so let's look at an example at that. So we're going to add to it. We're going to add an example. So if we have some parallel lines, or no, sorry, they're not parallel yet. We want to prove that they're parallel. And I'm going to say that this angle, well, that doesn't make much sense. Let's see. Um, this angle is going to be 110 degrees, and this angle is going to be 2x plus 10, and we want to prove that line J is parallel to line K. To prove lines are congruent, as to prove lines are parallel, the angles must be congruent. Therefore, if the angles are congruent, you set their measures equal to one another. Subtract 10. So 2x is 100 divided by 2, so x is 50. So if and only if x is 50, then, all right, j is parallel to k. x cannot be anything else. Same thing with the alternate exterior angle theorem. If two lines are cut by a transversal so that the alternate exterior angles are congruent, then by golly gee, the lines are parallel. So let's do our own example. Let's see if we have some alternate exterior angles. This one is 90 degrees, and let's say this one is 5x plus 20. So you say, all right, and let's say a JK again. Are J and K parallel? What can you put in for X that will make them parallel? If they're parallel, then these angles are going to be the same exact measurement. So I would take that expression, set it equal to the measurement, and then solve. So 5x is equal to 70, so x is 14. So that's the only case. So if x is 14, then j is parallel to k, if and only if that's the case. x cannot be anything else. So. Okay, we can do the same thing with consecutive interior angles. Let's remember again, these are the ones that are a little bit different because they're right in here, okay, consecutive interior. Remember, the name is all about the position that they are in in relationship to your parallel lines and your transversal. So you can always ask yourself, where are they? Are they inside or are they outside? So they're interior. So we only have two terms that say interior, alternate interior and consecutive interior. 
These are on the same side. Remember same side inside? So basically, we have here that if two lines are cut by a transversal, so the consecutive interior angles are supplementary, then the lines are going to be parallel. Now remember, these are the ones that are supplementary. These are not different measurements, so you would see them marked as being having different, okay? When you see different marks there, that means they're different measurements. So let's do an example. All right, so we have 3x plus 15, and we'll say that this is, oh, let's switch those. that this one is 105 degrees and this is going to be 3x plus 15. So consecutive interior angles, um, they should add up to 120. So, sorry, they should add up to 180. I was adding those two together. So these two are supplementary. So 3x plus 15 plus 105 they both, when I add them together, they equal 180. And remember a little check you can do for yourself if you're still a little confused, is ask yourself what type of angles would they be? Would they be acute, obtuse, or one of each? And here we have one right here is obtuse and this one is acute. So anytime you have a mixture of one acute, one obtuse, those are the angles that are going to combine to be supplementary. So 3x plus 120, equals 180, subtract 120, so 3x is equal to 60, so x is 20. So if x is 20, then j is parallel to k. Remember, rock stars, we're all going to step it up a little bit so we can all stay number one, and we're going to have an amazing year, and we are going to end up liking geometry, all right? Okay, example two. How can you tell whether the sides of the flag of Nepal are parallel? So these would be the sides of the flags here. They wanna know how can you tell that they're parallel? Well, here's a transversal. They've told you that these angles here are congruent. They're marked for a reason. Remember, they're only gonna show you the markings if you need to use them. So what we can say is, yes, indeed, we know that they're parallel, okay? Because the alternate interior angles are congruent, then we know the sides of the flag are indeed parallel. Okay, you try this yourself. Checkpoint, can you prove that lines A and B are parallel? Explain why or why not. So you see what you can come up with? Okay, a sentence, something describing, yes, why they are, yes, why they are not. So are they parallel? Yes, because the consecutive interior angles and I'm going to abbreviate a little, interior angles are supplementary. Because see, they've told you right here that measure of angle 1 and measure of angle 2 equal 180. These guys equal 180, so that's what they're supposed to equal if these lines are parallel. If they had told you that these two angles equal one another, then it would have been a no because they don't need to equal one another. Okay, I want to add another few examples um, for you so that we can talk about if lines are parallel. Do you have enough information to prove that the lines 
are indeed parallel. So let's look at this situation. If we have some lines and they are P and Q and here is our transversal. And what if you knew that this angle was 60 and this one was 60? And I asked you, do you have enough information to prove that P is parallel to Q? So it kind of would be looking like this. P is, is P parallel to Q? If so, state the postulator theorem that would allow you to say that. And when the question is presented to you as postulator theorem, it wants to know, well, by which one? Is it AIA? Is it alternate exterior angles? Is it consecutive interior angles? Is it because they're corresponding? Which one, which postulator theorem, these are the postulator theorems, all right, are you using? So in this case, so like in this, we'll just call this, this is example or checkpoint three. Yes, they are parallel. So yes, P is parallel to Q. All right, because, and I'm going to abbreviate, the alternate interior angles are congruent. All right, so that's one case in where you can say that yes. All right, so what if I gave you another example? So example four. And I told you that this angle is congruent to this one. So my question to you is, is line P parallel to line Q? If so, why or why not? So basically, this situation would be a no. They're not parallel. Because basically what you have here, okay, these are sometimes referred to as same side exterior angles. We don't really discuss them too often, but basically same side exterior angles, they're not supposed to be congruent. Do you see how this one is acute and this one is obtuse? So being congruent, this, is, this does not work because the consecutive um, exterior angles are not, because these guys are supposed to be supplementary. Okay, so not being, you know, that they're not supplementary, that one doesn't work. So basically the whole idea is, is you want to make sure you have enough information to say they're parallel. Sometimes you won't be given inf enough information. So then you'll just have to decide basically, is there enough information or not? So if you were given another situation you know, where you had this type of diagram and they just told you that, you know, this one was 110. Do you have enough to prove that P is parallel to Q? Okay, no, because all you know is this one is 110. Okay, so basically to what I'm trying to get to you is to prove that anything is parallel, you basically need two pieces of information here. I only have one angle, so I can't really prove anything about any of the other ones, okay? So one piece of information is not enough. If you do have two pieces of information, you need to make sure that they have the correct measurements that they're supposed to have. All right, well, y'all have a good weekend. I'll see you on Monday. And um, y'all have, hope y'all have a good weekend. I'm actually going to take my daughter to, to get her hair cut. So we're going to go to the mall, get the hair cut. We're going to ride the Ferris wheel. So that's what kind of fun I'll be having. I hope you have just as much fun as me.